Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, the album's called The Magic and the Loss. What's the connection that you make between both of those terms? I call the album <clears throat> Magic and Loss because uh, the album is an example of how to deal with loss and uh, the ability to deal with loss and the process that takes place that makes this possible. I, th uh, I think of as magic, which I also think of uh, music as magic. So is loss uh, something that you become really more aware of with uh, age and with uh, the passing of time? I think these days in particular, all of us, probably yourself included, experience loss of a friend or a family member. Isn't that true? That's true, but doesn't that also include, I even though it's uh, not the actual uh, theme of the album, does that include uh, you know, the loss of things through civilization, the loss of things that used to be there and which are l lost through the process of uh, getting more quote-unquote civilized? I hadn't thought of that at all. Uh, the album is also about friendship and love and the loss of this friendship. Uh, is that something, I mean, it's from the album, it sounds that it's uh, something that's truly important to you, friend, I mean, friendship? Well, sure. Uh, how do you, uh, I mean, how do you value it? How do I value friendship? Well, there's a whole album about friendship, so I would, I would put it uh, right at the top. Is it something that uh, to you, out, for example, outlasts love, or, or is that part of the same thing? I think it's part of the same thing. For me. It's, uh, I mean, it's not, uh, said in the, at least in the words translations of uh, the album that we got, but uh, at least one of the people you're uh, talking about uh, on the album is uh, said to be Doug Pomus. Uh -huh. uh, can you hang? Is anybody here watching out, like, whether I'm shiny or yes. anything like that? Yes, we are. Oh, is that what she does? And I'm also watching. Oh, okay. Excuse me for a second. I just want to make sure I don't look like a cue ball. No, you don't. What were you saying? Okay, the, so the question was, uh, actually, it's, be, it's been said that uh, one of the persons you are talking about on the album is Doc Pomus. The great Doc Pomus. Yes. Great man. So what was your uh, relationship with him, the, the fact that uh, he was a New York-based uh, songwriter? Well, he was a lot more than that. He was just a, uh, a tremendous guy, an incredible guy, uh, amazing, truly uh, unique and wonderful. Um, it's. Uh, terrible to this day that I cannot call him on the phone. Every once in a while, I wrote about it on the album, I, I go to, I just go to call him up. Uh, not there. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you a funny story. A bunch of us, uh, after the funeral, uh, they said a bunch of the women wanted uh, his brother and his children to leave his answering machine on because the, the women liked hearing the voice so much. Not to, not to take it off. And Doug Pomus used to uh, write with Maud Schumann. Yeah, who also passed away. Uh, I was interviewed by Maud Schumann uh, 12 years ago or something. 
and uh, is somebody with the, who had been living here in France for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, more Truman. Yeah, but not as a songwriter. No, yeah, as a songwriter also. Yeah. And, and as a singer. Uh -huh. But as a songwriter. Uh -huh. uh, do, do you... Um, I mean, do you feel there would be uh, something like uh, uh, a clique of uh, you know two people who have been writing songs in New York City from the late fifties, you know, starting be, out in the late fifties, early sixties? It would be very small. We could all sit at just one table, very small table. Uh, who else would be there? Paul Simon, probably. Yeah. Carol King. Yeah. Ellie Greenwich. Mm -hmm. Jeff Barry. Cynthia Weil. Barry Mann. Of that type. What uh, would be, uh, I mean, obviously, aside from the fact that you're from the, the, the same uh, city, the same area. What would be the common spirit? Oh, um, I don't know about that. I don't know if all of us have a common spirit. But if there is a common thread, it's probably the city. Uh, which is why I wrote my New York album, because uh, I thought that... Uh, I should recognize that New York was a person in my life, that it existed like a huge person affecting me every day, one way or the other, shaping me, and that I was a product of the city. And nothing I could do would ever change that, because I'm halfway through my life, at least, and the city has affected me for all of that. Al Cooper, who uh, actually is another New York uh, songwriter and musician, uh, once made Has he ever written a song? He would say so. Do you, could you tell me the name of one? I was about to. Uh, just because he said he, he had a song, an album called uh, New York, She's a Woman. Who, 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 uh, does that uh, make any sense to you? Not at all. I mean, I could figure it out. New York is a woman, New York is a this, New York side. Yeah, it's, I never thought of Al Cooper as a songwriter. I thought of him as a keyboard player. So, not to denigrate Al Cooper. I mean, I think he did a song called Short Shorts with the Royal Teens. Isn't that true? You don't know. No. You would know better than me. Not necessarily. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think of him as a songwriter particularly. Do you feel that uh, there is, I mean, it seems from the, just from the outside, it seems that uh, there actually is a, a, a thread or at least a, you know, a line that you've been uh, pursuing or that's been guiding you uh, from maybe from further on up but at least from the New York album through uh, Songs for Drella and now to the new album I mean it seems that it's like uh, refining uh, uh, you know so some kind of uh, way of writing and uh, storytelling I think from uh, the very first album there has been a stylistic thread, but it becomes particularly apparent and effective, I think, starting with the New York album, then Songs for Drella, and right now, I think in a quantum leap, for me personally, stylistically uh, and technically, uh, magic and loss. I feel a, a real advance, yes, so personally. Did you, I mean, do you actually uh, can see yourself, you know, getting better? I better be getting better. I think that uh, 
certainly for me, the more I practice something, I get better at it. And I've been practicing a number of things for a while now. And I, th I think I've gotten better. So I don't know if other people do, but I think I have. I just told you so. Mm -hmm. uh, so that makes two of us. At well, at, at least, least two of least. us. At the very least. At least two of us. <laughs> Uh, so th does Thank God for that. Th does that? Um, I mean, th th does that uh, fact uh, makes it uh, more, let's say, uh, evident that uh, this should be uh, the time where you decide to uh, publish an actual book of uh, your writing over the years? That was a fortuitous thing that occurred. It's something I would have liked to have done for quite a while. I was never asked. But when I was asked, the person who asked me when we discussed the book, uh, the kind of book they were interested in was the kind of book I was interested in doing, which was more than just a compilation, and it was not, uh, you know, with pictures and, it, and toys and autographs. It was a real book, a real collection. Of, of the lyrics that would form a narrative and propel you like from the 60s, 70s, 80s right up to the 1990s. Yeah. Um, in that book you decided to... We're looking for a publisher in France, by the way. Uh, I might add, do you think we could do this without anyone using the bathroom? It's not... Uh, it's, not our, it's not our room that's doing it? Oh, okay. Because okay. you should charge money. They're going to do that. Uh, I guess getting, uh, by the way, it should be quite easy to find a publisher in France. Uh, the interesting, one of the interesting things is that... We have, we have a publisher in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody shoot the guy? <laughs> Very persistent. We have a publisher in Germany uh, and England, but not here. An interesting thing is that uh, you decided to include uh, two journalistic pieces uh, that you did one with uh, Vaclav Havel, who's long been a uh, fan of yours, and uh, one with uh, Hubert Sorby. Uh, who obviously is somebody who uh, has at least a, a kinship of uh, interest uh, as far as the subject matters uh, is involved. Well, uh, I did these interviews because it was an opportunity to meet two people that I really admired, Hubert Selby and Václav Havel. Um, and it was great to meet them, uh, interview them. Very nerve-wracking to be an interviewer. It's not something I would want to make a habit out of. It's much too difficult. Gave me new respect for the journalist, having to go through that. But it was, uh, I did get to meet these people, and, uh, and I wasn't disappointed. Of course, I was interested in uh, things about writing, learning more about writing. Uh, so a lot of my questions were oriented around that subject. Obviously, both of them are writers. One of them has been uh, taken to a situation which he probably didn't think would occur in his lifetime, given the, the country he was living in. Um, why uh, do you think, or uh, you know, what uh, comes to your mind when you see that uh, people in the eastern countries, and particularly Czechoslovakia, seem not to be fascinated with the, let's say, uh, Bush uh, or Reagan side of the United States, but the very non-official ones underground part of the state. 
Well, it was interesting to see in Czechoslovakia just how much songs meant to them because uh, certainly my songs are implicitly about freedom of expression, and at least that. And that's the way they were taken over there, and they had such incredible repression there that something about freedom of expression really meant a lot to them. And so they're very receptive to something like that. They certainly wouldn't be receptive to the repressive, regressive policies of Reagan Bush. You've been involved uh, in those last few years uh, with uh, Amnesty International, with Greenpeace, with uh, Farm Aid. Uh, how, how much do you truly think that uh, an artist can make outside of his own work, I mean actual work, either writing or, or records or whatever, can truly contribute you know, to uh, these type of causes? Well, I always think each to their own. Uh, I think every person could pick if they find all of this confusing, so many, so many benefits, so many causes, so many organizations, it's like so impossible. Which, which one is for you? Then, so you pick just one, just one, and you only operate for that one. I say, as a private person, you could just pick one, and that would be enough. In my situation, because I'm a celebrity. At least it's an opportunity to use the celebrity for something. It must be good for something. I can't imagine what, but here's, here's something, in fact, that the celebrity is useful for. It attracts attention to causes that, uh, that, it is good, that it's good to have attention drawn to. So that's why I do that. And do you... Um... I mean, a celebrity has to be good for something more than getting a good table in a restaurant quickly. You know, if they're going to write about you anyway, if, oh, what did you do? Then you say, well, I did this. We're over here. You feel this is uh, something that uh, you owe to yourself, or that you actually owe to, uh, well, basically the general public audience? Oh, I think everybody would like to do something positive and good with their time. Uh, these things don't take that much. It's not hard for me to do that. It's not asking very much of me. So uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to do a relatively small thing uh, that causes, uh, that, that is part of something positive. No, and what about the, the actual uh, writing? I mean, is that something that, uh, let's say, you would uh, do anyway or keep on uh, doing even if there wasn't an audience for it out there? Well, I would do the writing anyway, but if I didn't have an audience, I don't know that I'd be able to make a record or uh, perform with a band. I mean, I would write and play anyway. Uh, But of course, if you have no audience, I don't know how long you can play for free, especially with no audience. And certainly you wouldn't make any records unless you just made them for yourself and kept them in the closet. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm very lucky to be uh, in the position that I'm in right now because I think that I've gotten a lot better in a lot of different ways and I'm just starting to understand how to do the thing that I do better now than never. And so uh, I think the new album is a, ref a reflection of that. It's an advance over the other albums, very much a part of the last three, New York Drill and now this one. I think. Uh, you might be able to, to hear the progression, uh, the idea of a thematic whole, a beginning, a middle, and end, uh, an increase in uh, sophistication of um, studio technique, because production is uh, art in itself. And I think that I'm working in a relatively new art form, 
which is the CD for an hour with poetic lyrics, adult themed, connected from beginning to end with beautiful music and very beautiful sound. Uh, at the same time, I mean, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I mean, it's a real uh, artistic move uh, for yourself. I mean, that includes the the song for the album, because I mean, I guess it would have been easy for you to uh, bash out uh, a couple more, you know, uh, New Some York. New York. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, of course I didn't. So that's uh, no, I. Didn't see any reason to do something like that. Like I said, I'm, I'm interested in advancing, not repeating. Unless the, re unless being repetitive would make uh, make an advancement. But uh, everything I've done so far is to try to stretch. And. Okay, we have to change it. Yeah. At least they're having a bath. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, Lou, so what, what about uh, the fact, I mean, you, you obviously you're growing and you're advancing and changing as an artist, but uh, well, obviously what you done previously, what you've left behind, uh, seem to be uh, catching up uh, a lot of people's imaginations uh, still nowadays. Uh, I, I mean, it's impossible to count the, the, the velvet on the ground like sounding bands that are coming up you know, every day, whether it's in France, England, the States, Australia, or wherever. So, I mean, what? how does that make you feel, you know, maybe when you pick one up on the radio. Well, you know, it took 25 years for people to uh, really recognize the Velvet Underground albums that were made 25 years ago. I hope with me, <laughs> it's not another 25 years since I wrote all the material for the Velvet Underground, that uh, it's not another 25 years to uh, get to my albums. Also, as far as the groups that sound like the Velvet Underground, I get asked this all the time. If that's true, that's very, very flattering. Yes, some uh, people seem to be uh, coming up the years, because uh, now there's a, you get a Walk on the Wild Side cover every week. And sometimes they're big hits. Uh, Marky Marks, Walk on the Wild Side, is a much bigger hit. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Sorry about that. Won't do that again. Is a much bigger hit than my Wild Side ever was. Uh, with the Walk on the Wild Sides that are out, um, the, that are sampled, uh, they have to come to me for permission, or else I sue them. There's so many, it's very, very difficult to uh, control it. But uh, the Marky Mark one was one that I liked. And so I said, yeah, you could do this. I kind of like uh, all these young kids running around sampling things. I, I think there's all these interesting things they can do with it, and it's kind of fun. Would you do it, I mean, if you, if you were starting out nowadays? Is that the way you would go at music? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm a guitar player. You know, I would... Uh, I don't know if it's the kind of thing I would be involved in, but I think the way some people use it as a tool is really fun, as long as they credit the people that they take it from and do it with their permission. I think it's very important that they credit the person they're uh, sampling. Like you probably but it's a great way for like kids to put together whole little productions just out of sampling. Well, we have a tribe called Quest. You probably ah, there taught was a few of them a lesson. Yeah, or at least a business lesson. A tribe called uh, hmm? at least a business lesson. Well, uh, without getting into any of that, 
A Tribe Called Quest comes out is out of New York. I think they're one of the better ones. Uh, but as I say, sampling they have to give you credit. They can't just uh, sample you and walk away. The, the, uh, w one of the uh, interesting things is that it's uh, uh, becoming more and more clear uh, now to, to people who are watching your work uh, that actually, even though you're very much of a guitar player and uh, uh, from the rock era, uh, you also seem more and more to uh, uh, belong to uh, kind of that uh, tradition of uh, American writer that uh, can go uh, much further up uh, the, the century, but uh, that includes people who were, uh, you know, writing and performing their own writings or their poetry, like the, the beat poets, for example. Is this in the tradition of that? Is that what you? Yeah. Well, do, you, do you feel there's any connection? Just because I, I'm thinking about that, obviously because of the book and also the fact that you've been lecture. I mean that you've been reading. Uh, oh, I've been doing uh, an hour and a half performance readings from the book. It's very. Uh, it's been fabulous. Really great. Very interesting to interact with the audience in that way. So I suppose it would be possible to see how it goes back to a tradition uh, that you might be talking about, the poets reading in the 50s. Um, my point is that for my songs, I try to have lyrics that are poetry in the first place and can stand alone from the music. The book is a demonstration of that principle. So, uh, but uh, it is great to combine the whole thing, the sound, because I love sound so much, S sound and the words together. And then it is also interesting to suddenly to drop the music. Sometimes uh, what I noticed is some of the lyrics are much funnier, but also some of the lyrics are much, much harsher. Without the music there to... Uh, get you through with them because without the music there that's all you hear are the words so you can't miss it sometimes with the music there you might not notice G given the fact that uh, those words were written to actually be sung and performed with music which means with a beat are you, have you ever been uh, tempted to kind of like, uh, when you were reading them, to, to kind of like rap them? I don't understand. I mean, given the fact that those words were written to, to be sung and to be played uh, with a beat behind them. No, but they're also written to stand alone. They were written with the idea in the first place that if there was no music there, they could stand on their own two feet, that they did not have to depend on the music. Then I put music to it. But even with the rhythm, doesn't that give, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the writing, you know, a rhythm that they have to, that they have to get? Well, I have a, a rhythm in the first place. But when you're reading, you can play with the rhythm different rhythms, because you don't have to keep time to a drum. So you can expand on that rhythmic thought. So what gives the beats then? The beat is in the words. It's actually the beat is in the person reading them, acting. Uh, also, when doing the reading, you can hear the different voices within a lyric. It's not always just me. There's all different people talking in the lyrics and uh, you can hear the acting or hopefully you don't think of it as acting you just think of oh this is a different voice and you accept it what's the uh, usual audience expectation of you when they, they come and you know just to hear you read them uh, I think the audience knew they were coming to a reading and that uh, it would require 
they were the loveliest audience you could imagine. I think they knew that it would be a different experience, and they were prepared to give of themselves for it. And it was one of the high points of my life, the readings, especially in New York, my home. Okay, thank you very much. Ah, merci. Can you move the light in so that I can close the door, please? Thanks. I'm starting to move the light in so I can close the door.